All right, hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I've got you zoomed in nice and close on the vise, so it means that we're going, it's time to tie another fly up. And I've got a real simple fly for you uh, today. This is actually going to be a brassy. Not a bra well, yeah, a brassy. Uh, it's a really, real simple yet effective fly. Uh, it would actually be considered a guide fly. And right about this time, there should be a uh, fact appearing oop, right there. Uh, down over here showing you what exactly a guide fly is supposed to be and we'll go ahead and jump into it I've actually got a bead on a size 14 scud merger hook it seems to be like a really good hook for uh, you know the fly and stuff like that I've already got it pre-dressed with the uh, thread and the bead uh, another fact should be appearing right down here uh, for what the term dressing the fly means uh, right here i've actually got some red ultra wire however uh, you can tie the fly in uh, many many different colors however if you do tie it in a copper color it's actually a different fly instead of a brassy uh, and that uh, fact will appear down here as well so make sure you guys check that out both flies are very very good uh, first thing or well let's go ahead and start with what you guys are gonna need uh, you're gonna need uh, your hook a size 14 it's got a merger hook will work just fine uh, you can tie it with the bead or without I just prefer tying it with the bead uh, you'll also need uh, some peacock curl right here but you're really not gonna need that until the end uh, you it's a good thing to have on there, but it's not something that you technically need you can get by without it uh, So what we're gonna do first is we're actually going to tie in our wire I kind of like to tuck the end of the wire into the bead a little bit uh, Before I tie it in that's not something that's needed But for me, it just kind of helps because it gets it out of the way uh, And you're gonna want to tie it back a little bit Just to kind of give it a little bit more of an even body uh, I do know that some patterns you can tie a little bit of some hackle ends uh, in the back here. Our uh, pheasant tail tips right back there to add to it. I don't really use it just because I like to keep my flies a little bit simple. Uh, I like to keep them guide fly styles. And as you guys know, that, that tip was, or that, uh, that fact was put in the video earlier. That way, you know, if I lose the fly or something like that, I didn't spend 30 minutes working on it just to break it off on a rock or a branch or a fish runs off with it. Uh, so once we have all of our wire tied into it and we've brought our thread back up to the bead, it is then time to start wrapping the wire. Uh, now, if you, for a, a brassy or a copper john, you want to keep your your wraps really close together. However, if you have a small gap here and there, uh, it's not going to be that big of an issue. Now, if you want to take it and just sort of give it uh, like even wraps such as this, um, you're actually going to wind up with a zebra midge, which is a completely different fly, which will tie on a different, uh, excuse me, which will tie on a different video. Sorry, just going to grab a Mm. a sip of tea and then we're going to go ahead and start wrapping the wire so for this you really want to keep them your wraps pretty close together and then that'll actually give you like a nice sort of wire body on there and this is a real simple fly uh, like I said it's kind of a guide fly because it's really effective in a lot of different conditions and it's quick to tie so if you lose it or you know something runs off with it or something like that you're really not going to be out any anything there and then you know you can tie up 10 20 more in like a 30 minute setting and then you know you're you're good to go again so uh and fun fact this was actually the first well, it was one of the first flies that I learned how to properly tie. Uh, I believe it was either this or it was the San Juan worm. Uh, that was the first fly that I, I learned to tie. So uh, to be able to see, you know, 
this up here now is it's kind of nostalgic. Um, <laughs> but once we get the, the wire buddy done, uh, we're then going to uh, tie off the wire. You don't really need to really, really like horse the wire down with a lot of thread. However, I am like the, uh, I am the meaning of Murphy's Law. And if it can happen, it will happen with me. So it is a good idea for me to make sure everything is tightly wrapped down. Uh, that way stuff doesn't happen. <laughs> and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and keep our thread towards the, the ending of where our wires left off. And we're going to take our peacock hurl. And with a peacock hurl, uh, you can use one strand. However, I like to use two strands just because it gives, uh, you know, a peacock curl head a little bit more of a, a little bit more bulky, a little bit more full head. So I, uh, I like to use two for that and it seems to work pretty well for me. Um, and we'll go ahead and get that tied in. Uh, it's the same, uh, same thing that you do with a lot of other flies or anything like that. You just hold the peacock curl in place, bring your thread up, pinch it, and then bring it back down to the other side of the hook, and then just bring your thread up to the bead. And there you go. Uh, now to wrap in your peacock curl, you've got two methods. You can either use uh, your fingers or you can use a uh, hackle pliers. I actually lost my hackle pliers, so I'll need to find those. Uh, another technique is you can actually wrap your peacock curl in with your thread uh, however I kind of trust using my hands for this kind of stuff a little bit more excuse me and I know if I use the thread I'll end up breaking them so yeah so what we'll do is we'll take our two threads and we'll start wrapping them uh, into the hook behind the bead and I usually go back and forth a little bit and that just gives it a little bit more of a bulkier thread and then give it just a couple extra wraps behind the bead like that then we take our thread and then we're actually going to tie that peacock curl in like that uh, and from there you're just gonna go ahead and snip your peacock curl uh, when you're snipping your hurl, make sure you be careful not to snip your thread, because if you snip your thread, all of that peacock curl is going to fall off. Uh, if you do lose your peacock curl, um, it looks nice when you first have the fly, but once you get out there on the water, you start catching fish, and maybe it breaks off or something like that, you're not going to be too screwed over uh, with not having a fly, because your fly will do just fine. Uh, without that peacock curl. Um, I probably should have said at the start of the video, I do apologize for the graininess of the video. I haven't quite figured out a way of getting rid of that. And once I get this fly done, I'll give you guys uh, a close-up shot of the fly. That way you know what it, exactly it will look like. Um, once you have your peacock curl tied in, it's then time to whip finish the fly. Uh, that's this nice little doohickey here. Up. And I usually like to make my wraps. Yeah, there we go. I like to keep my wraps sort of behind the bead instead of the eye of the hook. Uh, you could probably get away with putting it. Yeah, you could get it away, guys. Uh, <laughs> I like to uh, keep my wraps behind the the bead instead of on the eye of the hook uh, just because of the thread that I'm using it'll actually uh, you know wrap over that eye and then you won't be able to use it um, you might be able to however I recommend keeping it behind the eye of the not the eye of the hook I recommend keeping it behind the bead um, now this fly you don't really need head cement or anything like that for it however it does help and I do always recommend having that extra bit there just to give it a little bit more durability. Uh, I've actually got a UV like head cement stuff here. And we'll go ahead and give it a nice little dab. Alright, there we go. And after that, we'll go ahead and hit it with our UV light. Yeah. 
And this U, it won't take that long to harden under this UV light. Uh, but I like to give it probably a good minute or so, minute and a half of time under it. And there you go. It's finished, guys. You've got a red brassy. You can tie it in green. Uh, you can tie it in a lot of other colors as well, including silver and gold. Um, and if you want to use a brass colored, you're actually tying a brassy. It's based, not a brassy, a, a copper drawn. It's pretty much the same thing, just a different color uh, wire. And here we go. As promised, we'll go ahead and get this out of the vise, and I will give you guys a close up. And we'll uh, we'll do this like the the beauty tuber style. And then, oh oh oh, there we go. And see if we can't get that to focus on there. Eh, close enough. That's what it's gonna look like. You'll have a nice wire body with a good bead head and a peacock hurl collar on the back there. And there you go. That is the Red Brassy. If you guys do like these videos, let me know. Uh, make sure you like, favorite, and comment. Uh, if you guys do want to subscribe, um, that subscribe button's right there. You know where to find it. Um, besides that, there's nothing much else I can tell you guys about. Probably the next fly that we'll do, since I tied a Brassy today, will be a Zebra Midge. And I'll show you guys how that goes. So, without further ado, thanks for tuning in, guys. Stay safe out there, and cue that closer. Alright, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's been some time since I've actually done a uh, legitimate video outside of the vlog about me uh, complaining about life. So, uh, as promised, it's been some wide spectrum of games, be it uh, shooter, you know, adventure, and horror, but I didn't really have a horror game on the channel, so I figured why not a classic, uh, which is Slender the Ages. Uh, I am going to go ahead and let you guys know uh, I 